California Zephyr ran from uh, 1948 to 1970. 1970. I wrote it a couple of times in uh, about 1964 or 5. Um, the uh, restroom started to show a little wear, but the rest of the car was fine. Um, I didn't see inside a women's restroom. I just uh, I like to hang out in the uh, 
in the end of the car in the men's because you could smoke cigars or cigarettes or whatever you wanted to smoke in there. And I was a smoker in those days, in those young days. Um, it travels from Chicago, Illinois to Oakland, California. And it still does, but it's, it's a completely different Zephyr now. It's, it's an Amtrak train. Longest Amtrak train, by the way, and uh, 2,438 miles is a long ways. And that, that was the same for the original train. Um, it takes 51 and a quarter hours to go from Chicago, Illinois to um, Oakland, which is across the bay from San Francisco, if you don't know. Uh, you have to take a bus to get across uh, to the to San Francisco from Oakland, always did. And when I wrote it, I did the same thing because I lived in San Jose, which is 50 miles down the peninsula. And I got on a train in San Francisco and then got into San Jose that way. The ownership of the train was the CB&Q, the, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy, the Denver and Rio Grande Western, and the Western Pacific. And they all shared uh, the requirements for motive power. The Denver and Rio Grande pulled the train over the mountains to Ogden, and then the Western Pacific took it over and hauled it to California from there. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's the way it went. Western Pacific picked it up somewhere. It could have been Reno, but... Um, Anyway, they all pulled it at some point during its route. It ran daily. It does now run daily. The original stopped running in 1970. The original cars, the original train. I rode the original when I was very young. And uh, boy, was I impressed. <laughs> Gotta tell you. Um, they managed to arrange, although you, you start out in Chicago in the daylight, um, you travel across the Midwest at night, and when you get to Denver in the morning, it's daylight. So then you travel over the mountains in the daylight so you can see all the beauty of the Rockies. And when you get to um, Ogden, they would break up the train and parts of it would go to Portland and parts of it would go to L.A. and, and parts of it would go to San Francisco. I made the mistake of getting off <laughs> in Ogden. And uh, when I went to go back and get back on, oh, wait a minute, where's my train? <laughs> Anyway, I, I asked a fellow there, and uh, he was very kind and told me where my train had gone. Uh, they shuffled them around and reconnected them to, uh, to different sections, different motive power, too. And it's a beautiful trip. If you have a chance to take it, I recommend it. I've taken it a number of times in recent years, and, of course, a couple of times I, I rode way out from um, someplace in Iowa uh, when I took it and all the way to, well, I took the train all the way to San Jose, but it doesn't go there. I rode it to Oakland and then transferred. It's a wonderful trip. Recommend it. True train, stand back. I've got to figure out what's wrong with those lights. Can you figure out what's wrong or take them out? That flashing, flickering business is making me annoyed. We'll bring it through one more time, maybe a little slower this time. I'll slow it down when we get up here.
is this uh, cement loading facility. Cars go in there and they get loaded with cement. It's quite detailed up on the top. It's a Walters kit. The, uh, the silos came in multiple pieces with joints right there's a joint that comes right up here and of course they don't fit together very well but I was able to uh, use a little um, plastic filler and um, went together just fine I started wondering why some of these cars wouldn't run right and um, I started investigating and the NMRA if you're not familiar with it the National Model Railway Railroad Association uh, has recommendations of how to weight cars of the various scales and uh, And it's about 39 grams for a, uh, they give it to you in ounces. You see, this one's only 12, and it doesn't run very well. This one's 30, 31. It runs much better, but still, it could stand a little improvement. I've been trying to weight them by gluing weights underneath them, but it's really not very satisfactory. They sometimes hang down and uh, that's 25. This car runs pretty good, this Burlington um, hopper. So does this Rio Grande. I think those are still a little bit light. Then you go to something like this, and it's really light. It won't run at all. Now this one is better. So what am I going to do? Well, I know of something called liquid gravity. And I've ordered a bottle of it. And my plan is to drill a little hole in there. Put some in until it weighs the right amount. Then plug it, turn it over, and let it set up. I'm hoping it sets up. I don't really know that it sets up. I would expect it to set up. So, uh, if you're curious about that, go, go, on, go out on the web, look up the uh, National Model Railway Association, uh, NMRA, are the initials, and they can give you all kinds of uh, information that will really help you if you're modeling. 
Before we go, I'd like to show you the satellite view of this plant, the cement plant that I'm so interested in. Uh, as you can see, there's the, the rounded building, half round building, and down there is the coal dump. Coal is transported up into that big building, and then from there it leaves and it goes into a, a machine that turns it into super fine particles. So then those can be blown into the the rotating oven and the product gets put in the rotating oven and it turns and the product slowly moves along and in the meantime gets heated very hot. And if you're interested in that uh, process, there is a diagram of the whole process. I found it online. Here it is. Um, I won't go through it all with you, but it describes the entire process of, uh, of making cement pulverized limestone and uh, didn't really know anything about making cement before but I'm, I'm finding it quite interesting and I'm going to need to know in order to build some sort of a facsimile model of the process.